Are you looking to maintain your reverse osmosis drinking water system to make sure it keeps providing super pure water for your family? Not sure where to start? Want some advice from the pros? Relax, this video's for you. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. Today I'm being joined by Matthew from our tech team, and he's gonna help me share with you what you need to do in terms of maintaining your reverse osmosis drinking water system for your family. By the end of this video, you'll know where to start, what you'll need, how to do it, and how often. And you'll definitely know what you shouldn't be doing so you can maintain it like a pro. Really the first step is knowing what make and model reverse osmosis drinking water system you have. Now, that's not always very easy because many of them don't have that written on them. Now our systems, the Water Saver 75 and Gold Line 50, has that prominently displayed on the systems themselves, so it's no problem. But if you have a system that doesn't say doesn't have any information or you're not sure or you can't get any information on that, relax, there's no problem at all. Just email us a picture and from that we can figure out what replacement filters you need and give you a link to a video that'll show you the whole process. All you need to do is email those pictures to info at watereastore.com and we'll take care of the rest. So when maintaining a reverse osmosis drinking water system, there might be some minor nuances that differ between make and model, but basically it's all the same. And if you're looking for replacement filters or membrane to maintain your reverse osmosis drinking water system, you can go to our websites, either watereastore.com in the US or watereastore.ca in Canada. We offer free shipping and discount price. Don't forget about our reverse osmosis replacement filter bundles. Now, we've, we've pre-selected the filters that you need to do the filter change. So we've got the carbon filters in here, the sediment, and even the membrane. Now, the beauty of this, of course, is that it's all pre-selected for you, but also it'll save you a whole bunch of money as opposed to buying each one of those filters separately. And those bundles will save you a lot of grief in the process. Next, we're talking about reverse osmosis drinking water systems. Matthew, why would anyone want one of these? Uh, pure, safe drinking water. One of these guys right here. Yep. Pure, safe drinking water. Removes 90% of the harmful stuff in water. Right. And gives you good drinking water. Yeah, and what about chemicals? Removes the chemicals as well. Chemicals and odor and gives you good clean drinking water. It also removes fluoride, yeah. Okay. Fluoride is very controversial about whether it should be in the water or shouldn't be in the water. Me personally, I believe it's great for teeth and topographical treatment of your teeth using fluoride makes 100% sense. In terms of ingesting it, ingesting the chemical of fluoride to, to maintain your teeth, I think is a bad idea. So, and I think it should be removed from, from, from the water. And what about the environmental impact of using a reverse osmosis? It's okay. There's a little bit of wastewater that goes to the drain when you're using it. Uh, it needs to send X amount of water to the drain per amount of water that you're using. So if you're using uh, this unit over here that you have, uh, it for every gallon of water that you, you drink and consume, it sends about a gallon of water to the drain. Right, but the the big envi positive environmental impact of reverse osmosis is instead of buying bottled water, where you end up with those bottles of water, you know, ending yeah. up who knows where, you know, that kind of thing, you eliminate all that yeah. by just having the reverse osmosis system in your home, right? Yep. If you're looking for information about how reverse osmosis drinking water systems work, Again, I've got a great YouTube video that shows you the whole uh, process. You know, the, the key to the whole thing is this membrane technology, water forced under pressure through a membrane, and then it goes through there. But like I say, check out that video. It's got so, some great information there. So what types of uh, reverse osmosis uh, systems are there out there? So there's a reverse osmosis system, high efficiency one, and then there's a standard reverse, reverse osmosis. So the high efficiency one uses a lot less water like I was just explaining. Um, so every gallon of water that you drink, it sends one gallon of water to the drain. Whereas the not so high efficiency one will use about every gallon of water that you drink might send about three gallons of water to the drain. Well, they're actually worse than that, four and a half to five gallons. Four and a half. Some of the ones you get on Amazon, I, we tested them. I did a video where I did a comparison. I think it was eight or nine gallons for every gallon of water you drink. Yep. So uh, yeah, it's it, it, it's it's a big difference. What other types of reverse osmosis systems are there? Ones with ultraviolet. So it has an ultraviolet uh, that goes after the reverse osmosis system before the water goes to your tap. Yeah, if you don't have an ultraviolet on your whole house. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Any other types you can think of? Oh, remineralization. So if you're looking to add something back into the water before it comes out of your faucet, you can add a re remineralization filter onto the system at the end of it. So what would that do? It would add calcium or potassium to the water. 
Right, to and and that would neutralize the pH. Neutralize the pH. Yeah, it would raise the mineral content a little bit. I guess the other uh, area too is high flow reverse osmosis systems. In other words, the ones that we have that have the larger three eighth inch tubing. A lot of reverse osmosis systems have the larger quarter inch tubing, but ours has the three eighth inch tubing, the largest size tubing from the tank to the last filter to the faucet, so the water comes out fast. So what's the basic maintenance procedures for a reverse osmosis system? Uh, you're going to want to shut off the water coming into the unit. You're gonna to wanna to shut off the tank valve so that you're not getting the pressure from the tank coming back at you. You're gonna to wanna to relieve the pressure from the faucet after you've turned it off. And then uh, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and start changing the filter. I wouldn't re recommend taking it all apart at once. I would recommend starting from one spot and working your way through one by one by one. Yeah, so that you don't mix up the filters as you're doing it, yep. Matthew says. So the first stage would be the sediment filter. The second stage and third stage are the carbon filters. So that the, when the water's going through, it has more contact time. Up top is the calcium filter. This is the membrane. You don't always have to change the membrane. It's normally every five to 10 years, depending on how many people are in your house, how much you use the system. So it would normally be these three and then this one up top here. And then again, you wanna undo one at a time, pour it out, uh, put the new filter inside of it, put a little bit of silicone grease on, and then hand tighten it. And then after you've hand tightened it, tighten it a little bit more with your wrench. And how often should you be replacing the filter? At least once a year. Uh, again, depending on how many people you have in your house using it, how, it, how much consumption there is going on. But normally, if, uh, at least once a year, you want to be changing those filters and the top filter. And is there any other maintenance that you can think of on the, the reverse osmosis system that you need to do? Just on the membrane. And our, our, in your expansion tank as well, too. Um, sometimes the expansion tank might lose a little bit of pressure and you might notice a trickle coming out. Yeah, so this one here. So what happens when that happens? There's an air bladder that's inside of it. And sometimes you lose pressure on that air bladder. So you would want to disconnect it from here, from the system when it's all shut off, uh, take it somewhere outside and then add an air compressor on it and open up the valve with the air compressor and release that water out that's on the inside and then you try to fill up this bladder on the inside a little bit with a little bit more air. And once you've done that- uh, How much air? About seven to nine pounds of, of pressure. Seven PSI. Yeah, you don't want you, you don't want to overdo it, yeah. And then once you have done that and there's no water coming out of this little blue tap, then you should be go, good to go to set it back up. But again, once you've done that, you have to realize that it's gonna take about two to four hours to fill this tank back up. It doesn't just happen like that. Right, no, exactly. What about the membrane? You replace the filters on average about once a year. How often do you replace the mem membrane? Normally about five to seven years, but- If you're on soft water. If you're on soft water, yeah. But you can always test it for the total dissolved solids. You could get a meter and you would take it, take the meter and uh, remove the cap on the bottom here. And you'd have a cup of water coming from the faucet and then you would stick it in and it would give you a reading of what your total dissolved solids is. Yeah, so what should they be? It should be, 90% low, lower than what the water is coming out of your normal faucet. Yeah, so if the water coming out of your normal faucet is 300 parts per million with that meter, what should it be coming out of your reverse osmosis faucet? About 30%. 30? 30, 30, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Makes it from 300 down to 30. Yeah. You know, and uh, so if it's 40 or 50, what's that telling you? That it's gonna be time to change your membrane. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Any potential common areas of difficulty? Someone doing their, their own filters on the reverse osmosis system for the first time? Not really. Uh, as long as you sh make sure you shut the water off, you turn the valve off on the tank and you relieve the pressure. Uh, and again, make sure you have towels or blue paper towels. Uh, I recommend the blue paper towels because they really absorb the water if you happen to drop some. And, uh, and a bucket to put your filters in after you've done the, the filter change. Yeah, no, exactly. And then we've got some uh, YouTube videos that can help you through this process. Um, we've got one about uh, how you know when it's time to replace the membrane. You know, when we talk about how often the filters need to be changed, how often the membrane needs to be changed, and uh, that's important. Yeah, and another way to tell if the filters need to be changed is if your flow slows right down too. And, and it's not your tank. It might be that your filters are clogged now. So some reverse osmosis systems have one of these. What is it? Yeah, a stop leak. So if your reverse osmosis system is installed underneath your kitchen sink, this is something that I highly recommend that you have. Uh, it has a little white tablet that sits inside the bottom here. And if any moisturizer gets on it or any water gets on it, uh, it automatically expands. It will shut the water off going into that RO unit so that you're not having a leak or a flood or something like that if something happens to go wrong. 
Yeah, so and if you have one of these and all of a sudden you have no water, you can check that and see if it's been activated. Yeah. And you'll, and you'll know by not seeing any red. The red will get pushed up into the valve and all you'll see is white. So we get those service calls from time to time where they say, oh, my reverse osmosis system quit working. And then often I'll say, oh, did you have any plumbing work done in your kitchen? Yeah, lately we had the, we had the faucet replaced about a week or so ago. Yeah, but then something so, spilled so, Did any water spill down there? Well, I'm not sure. You know, and yeah, that's exactly what happened. Some water spilled, it shut off the system. Now it took them a few days to use up the water that was in the tank before they they suddenly ha didn't have any water. So like I say, if you if you if your your reverse osmosis system is in a finished area, I definitely recommend one of these. If you already have one of these, make sure you check them. And if you're doing maintenance and you have one of these, yeah, you want to make sure that you have replacement tablets and protect it with a cloth. Yep. Yeah. yeah, to make sure you don't get water onto that and trigger the system and then you can't figure out why it won't fill up afterwards, right? Sometimes when you change the filters, there's carbon filters and that involved. What happens when you start the system back up and you start to release the pressure? Uh, you're going to get a little bit of gray water and it could be for a while. Uh, what you, and what is that gray water? It's it's the carbon coming off of the filter, you know, because it comes from the factory. So you, you you need to rinse it out a little bit. And so once you change the filters, yeah. Um, how long? How much water do you have to flush through before folks can start using the water again on a daily basis? I would recommend uh, running that tank dry at least two times. So let it run, let it let it come down to a slow trickle, turn it off, let it fill back up again, turn it back on again, let it go to a slow trickle again, and then after that you should be good to go. You should notice the gray water's gone. Yeah, sometimes it, it doesn't even take that much, but what about when you replace the membrane? For well, the membrane, you'll definitely have to do that, maybe even three times. Yeah, three times is really what you should do for the membrane, because the membranes have a preservative in them. It is a food grade preservative, but you need to flush that out before you start using it. So what about if you're planning on disinfecting your reverse osmosis system at the same time? You want to use your old filters first. Yeah, you know, you don't want that? Because you don't want to ruin your new filters that you're about to put in, right? Yeah. So. So, so you've replaced, so you've got the old filters, you put the disinfectant in, so it disinfects the whole system, Yep. but that disinfectant runs through the filters, yep. right? You know, someone asked me uh, one of the comments recently on one of my uh, videos, and they said, well, I just replaced the filters a few weeks ago, or a month ago, or two months ago, or six months ago, and uh, why can't I just use the disinfectant, or why can't I take those filters out, disinfect the system, and put those filters back in? Well, because the filters have whatever you're, you want to, the bacteria or whatever is yeah. in. And so by put, by disinfecting the system and putting the old, the recently used filters back yeah. in, you're reinfecting the system yeah. by doing that. So you have to replace the filter. Speaking about disinfecting, so again, we've got a great YouTube video that goes through the whole process that describes the whole process of doing that. And um, how often you do that is really up to you. If you're in a municipal water system, remember you're using disinfected water, you're using chlorine yeah. and that kind of thing. So chances are you probably never need to do that. If you're on well water and that kind of thing, and you've got a whole house ultraviolet disinfection system that's been properly maintained, again, you probably don't need to do that. But if you're at all concerned about it or you're not sure about it, then definitely, if you don't have any kind of disinfection system, you definitely need to uh, go through the disinfection process with the reverse osmosis system at least uh, once a year. A reverse osmosis system like we just discussed here, this one here has four different filters that need to be replaced once a year. How do folks know which which filters to get? Well, they can take a picture of it and they can email it to us and we can help them out. Yeah. The other thing that you can do too is that uh, we sell bundles, okay? Yeah. So, so for our Hume Water Saver 75, that was a system I just had there, you can buy the replacement bundle. Okay, and it's actually much cheaper to buy them as opposed to picking this filter and this filter and this filter and this filter. If you get the whole bundle, um, it, it's much less costly. We offer free shipping. So because of that, when you get a number of items together, we can uh, get, definitely uh, give you a break on, on the filters. And if you're not sure about uh, which filters you need, again, I got a great YouTube video that explains the whole process of figuring out what you need, but you can just contact us and uh, we'll help you figure that out. And in terms of actually doing the reverse osmosis filter change, again, I highly recommend um, that you watch a video. So we've got a great YouTube video that goes through the whole process step by step. And I encourage you to watch that video before you start and, uh, and you'll find that things will go very smoothly with a little bit of advice. And if you're looking for more information about or thinking about investing in a reverse osmosis system for your family, 
or you're thinking about uh, getting the replacement filters in that, I definitely encourage you to go to our websites, watereastore.com in the US, watereastore.ca in Canada. And again, we offer free shipping and discount pricing. Click here for your next video on reverse osmosis drinking water systems, and I'll see you there. Any questions or comments, add them down below.